Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and in case you somehow missed it, ExileCon and Path of Exile 2 were things that happened and renounced, and uh, I wanted to go over basically my thoughts on PoE 1, PoE 2, and Trial of the Ancestors League. Um, even though I've done a lot of discussion about this sort of stuff uh, in the panels, um, but if you didn't watch those and you still want some of the opinion, um, I'm happy to give just a little bit. And as well as that, going to go over the um, actual announcements in case you um, missed some of the details and stuff. Uh, so I did have a lot of people coming up to me after the announcements going, so Matthew, what do you think about Path of Exile 1 and 2 going different ways and all that? And um, my TLDR of the entire thing before we actually get into all the details and stuff, my TLDR, TLDW, whatever the fuck, um, I think it has potential to be great. Like, really great. So, my worry, as I've mentioned, my one big worry is that um, with the way they're going to do this, so they're diverging Path of Exile 2 from Path of Exile 1, instead of, like, having it kind of as a side addition, which honestly was kind of weird to begin with, but, you know, was going to willing to let it happen and see how it goes. Uh, instead, it's getting, like, diversions, going to be separate entities to some extent. Your microtransactions are still going to carry over either way. Basically, what's going to happen is um, the leagues are kind of going to stagger. So let's say you play PoE 2 for, like, eight weeks and there's four weeks of the league of the league left by that point uh poe one might have its own fat new league come out and then you can jump over to poe one league and um play that until the new poe two league or vice versa and stay on whatever one you feel like staying on for as long as you feel like staying on it um now that's huge i think for just the raw longevity of being able to play Path of Exile, and my concern, as I've mentioned, is that you might be burnt out on too much PoE. Currently, with the gameplay loop we've got and the way that these seasons are structured and shit, you play as much as you want, you stop, you wait for the next league, you come back in, you're renewed hype, you're excited all over again, and you play a bunch more. Um, with this, you will just kind of be playing non-stop, Potentially, uh, and yeah, that's a lot of Path of Exile. One, two, whatever. It's a lot of Path of Exile is the um, take-home message. Aside from that, I don't really see any cause to be concerned. The concerns I've seen people say are like, Path of Exile 2 looks like it's going towards ruthless mode or some shit. Um, so, as far as I can tell, this is their big chance because it is diverging so far from Path of Exile 1. This is their big chance to create the kind of original vision of the game of PoE 1, but with much more modern tools and also everything they've learned over the past 10 years of PoE 1. So, there's still a lot that worked, a lot they'd love to bring back and enhance and work upon and a lot that kind of went too far kind of didn't end up being correct for the ARPG uh, that they originally wanted to design and yeah there might be some slowing down of the game but ultimately I think that's more to do with wanting the combat the gameplay of the game to feel like it matters and to feel like it um, is somewhat of a focal point of the game. So as opposed to just everyone saying lol PoE is like run in and one click button, one click everything and you zoom through and that game looks shit. Uh, instead, basically they are going with the approach that they want you to try the game out and go, wow, this combat is crisp. Let's then, after playing it for a while, discover all these new systems and all these new um all this depth and stuff that the game has to offer so that's fine i don't know like it's up to every individual to try the game out and um, i think the one thing you need to absolutely keep in mind is it's not path of exile one so what you're going to be doing is um going through the game with your own new refreshed perspective on what a path of exile can be don't be like oh everything i remembered in path of exile one but like worse or some shit nah 
it's like there's a lot of different things that might feel a bit worse um but then there's going to be things that look and feel a lot better um and they are different ultimately like i said this is their chance to kind of like rebuild the game uh in a modern setting and you have to take it for what it is and if you're afraid that it looked too slow because of the demos the demos set us up with some really bad characters with some really like you know they're just not at all built to be good by that point basically is what i mean like the gear level of the character the um, gem sockets the passives would have all been vastly under what you'd expect and i i said like i would guess that throughout the campaign you're going to be blasting pretty well on most characters um if you already kind of know what you're doing and um yeah it shouldn't feel too slow um that's basically all there is to it so you gotta have to wait and try it out yourself in the future and take it with a different sort of perspective and ultimately if it doesn't feel good there's still going to be path of exile one to play um which is still going to be more of the same so then there's the other concern i've heard that um they're going to just forget about path of exile one and just look more towards poe 2 and keep their focus on that so if you're someone that really loves path of exile one and um tried this and didn't really like it then you um, are afraid that there's less for you in the future. Uh, it's not an unjustified concern, but I don't think it's something you really should be worried about because um, from what they just then said, let me um, find the exact moment, maybe, if that exists. So as Jonathan explained, Path of Exile 1 will continue to be its own unique game once Path of Exile 2 comes out. We will continue to update it with expansions and leagues going forward. And because accounts and microtransactions are shared between the two games and their expansion releases are offset from each other, it's super easy to jump between them and effectively play both if you want. So I'm going off script for a second here and just going to explain this a bit better. Imagine we release a Path of Exile 2 expansion, right? So everyone does. So this is where he talks about the actual leagues and. Um the cycle that i just then described but from everything i've heard everything that's been said my understanding is that you're still going to get lots of path of exile one stuff like we have in the past few years now you might think oh but i didn't like some of the leagues that have come out they've still just been leagues that they've tried to put in um and you know some work some don't some in the past couple of years have been some of the best we've ever had so i don't see any cause for concern there and that has been on more or less a skeleton crew because there is a lot more people working on Path of Exile 2 in the past few years. Um, and if anything, I am actually thinking there might be much better PoE 1 stuff in the future for us because once PoE 2 is much more established and launched, um, I imagine there's going to be a lot of people working back on Path of Exile 1 at the same time as Path of Exile 2 and uh, we're going to get bigger and better things over there as well. Um, you know, rumor has it something like less than 10 people have been keeping up POE 1 for leagues and stuff for the most part for the past year or two or some shit. Uh, and I imagine, yeah, once the um, POE 2 kicks off, then we're going to have much more focus on POE 1 um, getting cooler, bigger shit as well as POE 2. And uh, yeah, those are the concerns. And I don't think they're something you really should be worried about. I think. Um, absolutely they are going to do their best to have games that you want to play poe one more of the same but bigger and better and stuff poe two kind of a revamped path of exile altogether that goes in um more of a new age arpg that you still feel very very familiar with um because it's still using a lot of the core path of exile systems um yeah I think it's all good shit. I don't know. Call me an optimist or some copium or some hopium or whatever, but I really see no cause for concern. Um, and I'm looking forward strictly to everything they've got coming our way. So then we've also got Trial of the Ancestors, a uh, real quick new league, um, which was right around here. So a new league coming out with Path of Exile 1 in... I'm going to say about a couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks time. And um, it looks pretty cool. It seems like it's going to be on the scope of a sanctum. 
it's going to be kind of you know a bit of a side content you go around you pick up certain um or not pick up you interact with certain pieces of um leak content you build it up you then do a big thing and uh, eventually it just becomes its own little run kind of like a sanctum is what i mean uh with decent rewards with also some kind of um extra like passive configurations so that was if we can find it league rewards so one of the big things it will be like replace small passive skills tattoos that is with various other shit so you'll be able to kind of enhance the theme of your dexterity int or strength based characters based off of their additional stats to do um, some extra bonus things. Some res, some lightning damage. Nothing too huge there, but a little bit of something. And then on top of that, they do actually have some tattoos that do some pretty big things as well. Uh, and um, some new uniques. And as always, they can be game changers. Um, there's also some other new tattoos slash currency style things that can be pretty big as well. Um, so the rewards do seem pretty juicy. An omen sort of thing, that's something that um, you kind of carry around with you, which from what they say, you shouldn't have too many of ideally in the end. Um, but yeah, carry around, they do certain things like kind of like a cheat death, you know, which is a uh, pretty saucy, um, one that gives you soul leader when you level up. And then, of course, an omen that can guarantee you a unique item with the chance orb. So that thing's back, uh, and they're also going to kind of try and shy away from ever doing anything that shares bases uh, on good items again. So good stuff there as well. Um, and then another new currency that kind of gives you the ability to see what it's going to do so that you can um, save yourself some of the future currency that you're going to use. Overall, some pretty big game-changing style stuff. Trial of the Ancestors does seem like it's going to be a bit of a thick league, and uh, with all the new stuff that's coming with it, um, should be a good one. Uh, and there's some other stuff coming back, like Sanctum's coming back with some revamps, uh, so that's pretty good uh, to see in here. It can be itemized. Um, you'll have a few new things, so some of the new things involve um, your defenses currently that you have like evasion armor yes will work towards mitigation of resolve resolve lost um after a certain point once your character strong enough has the right relics doesn't really matter too much anyway like you'll be blasting through runs but if you need this little bit of a boost there is that so that's pretty good uh there'll be new boons and um afflictions based off of some of this new stuff uh, so overall, yeah, Sanctum back and um, potentially, potentially bigger and better than ever. We'll see. Uh, no Sanctified Relics, though, which is essentially an extra gear slot and, you know, pretty power creepy. But they were fun, but we'll see what happens in the future still with those. New Atlas Passive Keystone, so even more expansion to the Atlas um, Passives uh, that will give you a bit more customization with some of the current... Um, League mechanics, some of these look pretty damn nutty. Love me some uh, Expedition, and yep, this one looks really fun. Uh, so Expedition, even though I love it, it can be a bit tedious, can be a bit much to constantly interact with, um, and this could make it just quite a bit cleaner and smoother and just funner. Who knows, right? Um, Tormented Spirits can possess players that gives you boosts and buffs and shit. Some really cool shit coming. Vile Side Areas are going to be a pretty big one, I think. Um, Vile Side Areas are very fun. And you being able to, like, roll them is going to be fun. And then they've also revamped a bunch of the modifiers on them to make them different. Um, so, yeah, Ultimatum Aspect. Look at that. Shit like that. Uh, I think that can be a pretty big thing for the game as well. And then overall, um, there's gonna be a bunch of new support gems as well. Some of them look really good. You can have like Warcry damaging stuff. You can have Vengeant Cascade, but on a support gem. So that does mean Vengeant Cascade is probably getting shit on, but at the same time, um, 
it's going to be on a support gem, which is going to work on everything by the looks of it because they showcased it on Frostbolt and attacks. So it's not just uh, attack projectiles. It would be all kinds. Uh, some minion support gem, very nice. Um, some totem thing and some damage life thing and some link thing. But yeah, support gems, um, new support gems can be pretty big. Sanity revamps, you're of course going to have a couple that, um, so there's Guardian, which I'm not sure is too good. There's Chieftain, not sure if it's too good, but it has potential by the looks of it. I'm not really going to go deep, too deep into that. Um, just know that there's been plenty of times sanity revamps have happened and everyone's gone, oh, it's terrible, and then it turned out to be OP. So, um, you know, theory craft in your own time, space, and um, effort if you feel like it, uh, but take everything with a grain of salt until things are happening, metas are figured out, and you can actually um, have it in your hands to try and play around with. So that's all of that. Um, as far as Path of Exile 2 is concerned, just a bit more details. I just want to go over a bit more of that. So six new acts. Uh, we've only seen four of them so far um, throughout the demo. Very few of like those acts we've actually fully seen. Um, act 4 had like several pathways, lots of different bosses. We've yet to actually even see any act bosses. So that's the crazy thing. Uh, we've seen some pretty crazy bosses and none of them have even been act bosses. So there's going to be some big stuff coming with that. But by the way, six new acts. Um, the campaign should be insanely fun to go through. And then on top of that, um, there's six new classes. And that's going to be a lot of fun to delve through as well as that. Three ascendancies on each class. So that's pretty crazy as well. Cyan is getting removed because they didn't really like how it like interconnected the tree too much. So for any real Cyan fanboys or something, I mean, that sucks. But ultimately, I don't think that should matter too much. Um, Cyan was a bit of a jack of all trades thing. And uh, you shouldn't be too much of a passionate Cyan follower when there's so much other stuff happening, uh, especially with the new stuff. Either way. 36 ascendancy classes so six new classes each with three new ascendancies that's actually just a bit of a mind blow in and of itself um and yeah just some quick screen grabs that don't really do anything um new skill gem system is gonna be the one where you can socket stuff into you can have a quick look at what some of these are gonna look like um on the website but that is a huge system of course uh meaning that links are kind of like going away and stuff but you still have to kind of link the gem instead um either way yeah really good shit there's new weapon classes to play around with so javelins flails some other shit i think we haven't seen um dual specking your passive tree so you can based off of your weapon types or some shit have an extra sort of line of spec and then swap between them and that's going to be pretty crazy to customize your builds with so you can kind of go a bit more of a hybrid build on the fly uh, huge new unique items and huge new just item art and item types and base types and all that and uh, checking out the actual item panel um, from ExoCon was pretty worth doing if you're into that um, you get to see a lot of really cool art and um, yeah it looks like it's going to be just you know next gen style um, items and feel to their items so it looks really good um, whole new end game they say so once you've completed the acts you've got um, end game with maps and stuff as per usual whole new maps i suppose whole new bosses that are getting put into those maps and uh, i mean hopefully bosses of maps feel kind of like bosses instead of just something you kill quickly and get a bit of loot for you know what i mean uh, bosses in current period we have very much an afterthought on maps and uh yeah maybe you're into that but i think it'd be nice to have proper bosses um that feel impactful and also feel rewarding for what it is uh and then yep there's trial of the ancestors and stuff and we can look over that but for the most part we basically have um lots of just better put together info for your own perusal if you wish uh on the website um and uh yeah what else there to say fucking cool shit right basically just want to talk about my opinion on poe one and two go over the details 
Um, I don't think there's anything to be afraid of. Uh, yeah, I think um, it looked potentially like it was going to be too slow uh, in just gameplay demos and how people have experienced it, but I don't think that's anything really to be worried about because our characters were so bad and it depended on what you picked. And um, I think once you go into PoE 2, with the knowledge you have, with the gameplay you have, you'll be able to figure it out pretty quick. You'll be able to put together characters that are pretty decent and um, feel good. Uh, the world itself is beautiful. The dodge roll feels pretty fucking good. And it's just something to get adjusted to because, like I said, keep in mind, it is very much supposed to be a different game and feel like a different game, not just Path of Exile 1 with a shiny coat of paint on it. Path of Exile 1 is still going to get its own shiny coat of paint, and um, look forward to that if you care less about the new gen form of um, PoE 2. Oh boy. Okay, so still a long while wait, I think, about a year till the beta. But um, the only other thing I can say is uh, I played a little bit of PoE 2 during the convention. But for the most part, I was pretty busy with my thoughts on things I had to do uh, for, you know, panels and stuff, um, just meeting people and making myself available. Uh, but once I got home, uh, when I wanted to like wake up and when I was going to wake up and like start streaming, all I could think about was, man, I wish I could go play some Path of XL2 demos and shit right now. Uh, I kind of stitched myself up on that one, but I was at the same time uh, pretty busy and pretty happy to be doing all the convention style things. So I'm, I, I would love to play some right now. I would love to get into it. Uh, and um, I hope you feel the same way. Still got a bit of time to wait. Still lots of Path of Exile 1 until then. Big new expansions and all that. So we'll get into it soon. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.